Um, I think uh, my screen is, is probably up and running now. Um, so as David mentioned, uh, Jamie Renan is my name. I uh, work in advanced analytics for Bank of Ireland Group. Uh, and we've hosted a, a number of events with the Data Science Festival uh, over the last number of years and have had really good, uh, really good engagement and really good response. So I uh, very much like to thank David, uh, Amy and Jess for, for inviting me to talk here um, about chatbots and the area of artificial intelligence. So what I'm going to be looking at today is uh, ways that uh, chatbots can become more human. Um, so we just um, sorry, I'm just going to take you through uh, just agenda of, of, of what topics we're, we're, we're going to cover today and just a, a kind, of, kind of structure of it. And as David mentioned, we'll have plenty of time for, uh, for questions uh, at the end. I'm so very much looking forward to, to your observations um, uh, and, and opinions and questions based on, uh, on, on this, uh, this, this topic. Um, so we'll start off and give a brief history of, uh, of chatbots. Um, beginning um, with, with the earliest chatbots in the, in the 60s developed in, in MIT and just give a little bit of context as, as to where we've, we've come from there. Um, we'll look a little bit about how uh, chatbots work themselves, the underlying uh, technology, uh, how it's changed over the years um, and um, natural language processing which is, uh, which is in, in, in use in, in most advanced chatbots today. Um, we'll also look at uh, what makes chatbot more human. So, um, very interesting area to research, and I know there's, there's bound to be a lot of opinions on this. Um, uh, so, we'll, we'll, we'll do deep dive into, into some, some areas that, uh, that, that can make, uh, make chatbots, chatbots appear more, more human and, and, uh, and engage their users. And we're also going to do uh, a little bit around uh, artificial intelligence in the movies, look at a couple of, uh, of characters uh, over the years, how they've evolved uh, from more sort of ro robotic characters uh, in the original movies going all the way back to, uh, to, to the 60s, um, characters like Hal, uh, all the way up to, uh, to more emotional uh, characters now who are able to connect and converse uh, uh, and you know, have a deeper understanding of humans. Um, we're going to talk then about ways to test uh, a chatbot and what to look out for, uh, how to make sure that the, the chatbot is, is, is capable and advanced. And uh, we're going to finish up with uh, a demo, um, which will focus on uh, a leading chatbot. Um, and also we have uh, developed a chatbot ourselves, which we, which we will show. Okay, so it all started um, with, uh, with, with Alan Turing, really, in, in, in the 50s. Um, the, the famous um, Turing uh, test that some of you may have seen the, the, the recent movie Ex Machina, um, uh, where, where, where it looks at, at, at the character that's built, uh, the main character that's built, Ava, uh, and ways to check whether uh, this passes, this, this Turing. Uh, a test um, to see if, uh, if a machine can uh, effectively exhibit human behavior. Um, so this is really something that kind of paved the way for, uh, for, for, for the area we're discussing today. So I mentioned uh, the, the Turing test um, back in 1950. Um, and we have a bit visualization here which just goes through uh, some of the prominent chatbots over the years. Um, the, the, the first one really that, 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 that comes to mind is, is in 66, uh, developed in uh, MIT in, in Boston, um, the, the chatbot Eliza. Um, so very famous initial chatbot that was developed um, based on decision trees. So basic functionality where it could respond uh, to different uh, programmed uh, patterns uh, and working the way through uh, you know other other chatbots that came later on such as such as parry um, uh, and then other chatbots you know famous chatbots that were uh, were deemed sort of you know psychiatrists to kind of uh, understand how humans uh, interact um, and, and you know play around a little bit with the emotional side of things 
uh, and then probably you know the likes of uh, IBM Deep Blue uh, would have uh, come to prominence um, uh, in, in terms of chess back uh, back in, back in um, in relation to Gary Kasparov and, and in sort of big breakthrough moments that happened over the, over the years where where computers were were considered to be uh, you know to be able to kind of um, to, to match us and, and, and exceed us. Um, and, and that brings us to, to IBM Watson uh, as well. And then I suppose recently the, 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 the chatbots are kind of coming to us more through our, our, our phone. You have technologies, uh, you have the likes of, uh, of Siri and uh, of course Alexa um, and, and Cortana and, and the advancements that are, that are happening there uh, in, in relation to, to others like Google Home um, Assistant um, and most recently, uh, the chatbot that, that, that uh, is gathering a lot of interest that Microsoft uh, produced um, operating in China uh, called uh, Zyace. Um, uh, and, and that's um, you know, really quite advanced in terms of what, what, what it can do um, and the conversations that can have with people. And even in terms of the you know, mastery of things like you know, NLP and approaches like that, um, this is, 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 is a bot that's actually recording music and, and lyrics and uh, you know, songs and everything like that. So, so it give you a flavor, flavor for where things are, are, are heading. Um, so the, the evolution uh, of chatbots, I suppose what we, what we would have touched on there would be you know, the likes of Eliza that kicked things off. We're talking about uh, scripted chatbots. Um, who have you know really basic rudimentary functionality where uh, you know they cover a, a number of, uh, of of options um, uh, through uh, through mat mat matching patterns. Um, then the the premise of of, of looking at the uh, intent recognition um, with chatbots, so uh, the ability to understand uh, our intent uh, in interacting with them and, and and what we want to achieve uh, from the conversation or or interaction. Um, moving then on to conversational chatbots, um, you know these are chat chatbots that kind of have an understanding of, of natural language, which we'll which we'll talk about uh, in a little bit more detail shortly. Um, and then on to the the, the consultative uh, chatbots, a term I quite like is, is is in terms of you know under understanding natural language and then taking it on uh, to the next step to to a predictive uh, element. You know, so this is a is, is a chatbot that can, can make decisions. And predict things, uh, you know, predict what type of products you might want, uh, or, or predict what kind of action you might want it to uh, to complete on your behalf. Um, so, you know, the likes of booking engines who can you, know, you can look through your data history and, and understand what you you might be doing. Uh, for example, if you're if you're if you're looking for, for services in a particular area. And um, so, talk a little bit about you know how how do chatbots work and and what's the you know the technology behind them. Um, mentioned earlier on the, 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 the you know the initial chatbots they, they followed this predetermined path um, with a decision tree uh, and very much answers based on, on on these options that you would you would go through um, and obviously the you know the, the, the more recent ones the more recent advances um, particularly with the, the, the high profile um, chatbots like um, you know Siri and Alexa that are coming to to us in mass as courtesy of, of, of both mobile devices and, and home advice. Um, uh, and then looking at, uh, at, at natural language processing, which is kind of, which is kind of driving that. Um, so it's ability for the technology to kind of, you know, to kind of understand and uh, to be able to analyze um, uh, uh, the natural language input uh, that we have with them. So we're looking here um, at the uh, popular Amazon uh, Echo Dot, which is which is what many of you will know through uh, through interacting with with Alexa. Um, so just in terms of, of of natural language processing, just to try and really break it down and, and simplify it a little bit more, some of you may have, have heard um, of terms like natural language understanding and natural language uh, generation. Um, so I suppose the to these are subsets of natural language processing. And I think the, 
the, the natural language understanding is 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 an area that uh, that I've been kind of following for for some time now, and uh, a number of years back, I was very impressed with a with a chatbot that was that was built um, by a, by a company that actually was acquired by Doodle. I don't know if anyone knows the the Doodle polls that that are out there, but this is a, a chatbot called called Mikan um, that really was able to, to to not only to just carry out tasks, but to, to really understand what you're looking for um, uh, and to engage in, in, in rapport building, you know, to be a, a, a listener rather than a chatbot that just wants to, to complete task A, you know, book something for somebody. Um, and then, you know, also the ability to, to actually respond and generate language uh, as well. So not just uh, understanding uh, and interpreting it, but actually you know, firing, firing back uh, and, and engaging in conversation. And I suppose just to, uh, to to give a kind of a uh, an idea of how this this process would work in in practice, you know, you have your your, your chatbot, you have your mobile devices, your your apps, your you know web apps, um, coming through this natural language processing layer, um, and the key components of that are obviously uh, the knowledge uh, and and the source content that you have in that the the um, the engine for, for for building building this and, and building the responses and, and the engaging conversation uh, and then of course really important the area of, of data storage and um, so where data storage becomes really important is uh, the ability to to remember uh, these conversations uh, and to build a picture over time uh, and to develop that understanding of, of the person that the, the chatbot is interacting with so really in, in human terms it's the ability to remember uh, what what somebody is, is is saying to you, and I think we've all experienced situations, and um, where we, we you know it might be a couple of weeks after we speak with someone and we've forgotten elements of that conversation. And I think this is an area where uh, you know where where, where chatbots, particularly customer service ones, uh, can be quite useful. They can straight away have access to this this data storage. So I suppose we'll get into probably the, the main aspects of the, the talk and some of the findings and research that, that, that I've done into, but you know, around what makes a, a chatbot more, more human-like? What is it that uh, we, we notice in our interactions with chatbots that make us feel, you know, this is a little bit more than just, you know, a standard bot there that has programmed, um, you know, to, to deliver one or two basic tasks for us. Um, so a, a trend really, you know, over the last, uh, the, the last decade or so has been around the introduction of voice uh, to give, uh, you know, that voice uh, to, give, to go beyond what you would have if you're just, uh, you know, sending a text message or responding to an email. So it brings that chatbot a little bit more to life um, and specific exa examples that really, you know, would have developed this and brought this to the masses would be you know, Alexa uh, via Amazon and Siri, Siri via Apple. Um, so voice is something that has, has become, you know, an integral part of, of making chatbots more, more realistic um, and, and more engaging. Uh, another area that helps uh, is, is, is characteristics. Um, so uh, by that, I mean that, you know, most chatbots uh, nowadays will be given a name um, and, uh, in some cases, a little bit of a background as well. Um, so the chatbot, for example, uh, that I'll be talking about uh, later on um, is the, the winner of the, the Loebner Prize uh, for Artificial Intelligence, and that's uh, Mitsuku. Um, and this has been given the, the you know, female persona, uh, 19 years old and living in Leeds. And, and, and that's the background that's been created by this chatbot and you can, you can interact with that and ask, ask questions and accordingly. Um, so we'll go on to another area, which is personality. So it's really quite uh, wide ranging in terms of what this actually uh, covers, but, uh, but, but personality really is, 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 is a real distinguishing factor here. Um, you know, you'd also often hear the terms about, about something or a process or even, even somebody being quite robotic in, in, in their nature. So this is really to try and inject a little bit of life into the person, uh, you know, the ability to, uh, uh, you know, carry out conversation, to have uh, opinions and to have responses 
um, uh, in many cases as humans if we can't do something or if we can't respond to something you know we simply say no we, we can't do this at this time but but uh, many of the chatbots now if they can't do something they, they build in um, uh, an, an interesting kind of quirky response as to what and what they can do uh, you know to get the personality get a little bit of sense of humor into it and that brings a little bit more uh, more of the human feel to it uh, so following on a similar area um, uh, around small talk um, so uh, small talk is the one that probably jumps out to me uh, as one of the biggest distinguishing factors here um, because if we think about our interactions as humans uh, and, and how we, we you know we want to try and and get that experience um, brought onto our laptop or our mobile device um, uh, I think you know as generations are, are kind of moving through now um, it, it looks and uh, feels like that you know that mobile phone we have is, is what we trust and that's what we want to interact with um, so there's a real opportunity here um, to uh, you know to, to move chatbots forward uh, if areas like this are covered and a small talk is, is the ability to just you know, shoot the breeze with somebody, have basic conversations, um, you know, welcome them to the interaction, greet them, say hello, ask what's the, what's the weather like. So these are simple things that we take for granted. But if you take a chatbot that goes straight into task mode, that's not something we do as humans. We would generally uh, engage in, uh, in friendly conversations and greetings uh, and things like that. And the reason why that's quite important in a commercial sense is that it can build uh, it, it can build a friendly rapport uh, with the, the, the chatbot, and this is something that over time uh, it can lead to trust, which is probably one of the areas that is of biggest concerns um, to people in terms of chatbots. So, is a chatbot something that you can trust um, with your data? Um, is it something that you can trust, uh, you know, sharing your 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 uh, uh, your feelings uh, in some cases as well? Um, so next point uh, that, that, that helps um, to distinguish ch chatbots and give them more human-like qualities is the area of emotional intelligence. Um, uh, this is really interesting because if we think about ways we interact uh, as humans, if we just have, for example, uh, you know, a, a traditional kind of chatbot where you're, you're typing and texting uh, or even... Um, even uh, uh, one that you're kind of speaking to, such as such as Alexa, for example, uh, you can miss out on that the visual element of it, which is um, you know people's body language, their uh, facial characteristics. Um, so a lot of the advances in um, in AI and machine learning now uh, can really help to to use that to understand uh, what emotions are accompanying a person and uh, based on their facial uh, expressions and uh, facial emotion recognition there uh, using e techniques like computer vision uh, are, are really, really creates an interesting opportunity there um, there's also uh, the opportunity to look you know beyond i suppose you know facial expressions and body language um, we can also look at the area of tone of conversation as well so if you're speaking to alexa for example in a very aggressive tone versus in a very polite tone you would think that it would be beneficial uh, for, for that engine in Alexa to understand if there is any underlying nerves or concerns or emotions in your speech. Um, so that really, really plays a, a, a big role. And it's something that's actually, you know, outside of chatbots is a commercial application that's of interest to a lot of companies now. They're, they're not just taking the phone data to text and transcribing it. They're looking at, at tonality as well and to see if that has an impact you know, at a particular time in a conversation, a person might have uh, used a very, you know, aggressive tone or a very uh, unsure tone, and, and that could be quite interesting. And also feeds into things like fraud as well as a use case. Uh, Self-awareness is, is another interesting one. I think, um, you know, a good uh, chatbot to exude a human quality of being self-aware is a chatbot that is that knows its limitations. Um, so, for example, if a chatbot comes up against a, a question or a task that it is unable to carry out, then it, it you know, much like a human, if we can't do something, uh, usually we will seek help or we will pass somebody on to somebody else. 
Uh, so I'm thinking in, in the context of a customer service situation, if you can't answer the phone or need to pass it on to your supervisor, chatbots should be able to do that as well, to be, be human-like. Um, so a chatbot that tries to kind of keep answering a question when it doesn't know, uh, ultimately that will lead in frustration for the user. So a few other, other points that are probably a little bit more minor that I just wanted to, to add in. So uh, chatbots need to, to slow down. Um, so by that, I mean the instant response that you get uh, when you write a query. Uh, if a response comes back too quickly uh, for us to interpret, uh, we, will, we will see that as being something that's rushed, that hasn't been thought out. Um, so, so some of the good chatbots that I've seen, the likes of uh, of, of me can, for example, you'll see when you're texting with it, you'll see those dots appearing that the chatbot is actually is coming up with a response. Um, so, so slowing down rather than giving you uh, an instant response uh, can be quite powerful as well. Uh, long answers, we've all seen it when we've, we've typed the question to a chatbot, hello, how are you? And we get this, you know, seven, eight line paragraph uh, that says, I'm good. These are the products that I'm selling. You know, these are the the questions that would you like me to answer to this? Would you like it's just a bit too much for us straight away? Um, so avoid long answers is something that can make a chatbot more human because as humans, when we're responding, we respond with varied lengths. So sometimes it might be a question of a very short response to it, to a, a question saying yes or no. And other times we might need to provide a bit more detail. So a chatbot that has a particular function, um, you know, the, the, the chatbots that are that are kind of in, you know in in the area of, of kind of mental health now um looking at uh you know at becoming good listeners being able to understand emotion um uh, and being able to provide support for people um so you know that's, that's another interesting area as well and then dealing with surprises um so uh changes in emotions during a conversation from a human uh from being you know frustrated to being very happy uh, at something ha having having been achieved or even other things that are happening in our lives. So, you know, human quality of being able to handle surprises and, and respond and to understand what the overriding feeling is at the time, it can be very important. So in, in the course of uh, preparing for this presentation, um, I spent a bit of time looking at interesting uh, examples of artificial intelligence in um, movie characters, and uh, you know, certainly, um, we were we, we were looking to kind of put together um, a, a poll, which Jess will 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 open for you shortly, um, about you know what characters do you feel um, are, are are the most interesting in, in, in terms of artificial intelligence. And just before we do that, you know, going back to the to the, to the original, um, you know, characters like Star Wars that we would have seen uh, those robotic characters, you know, for example, Data in Star Trek. Uh, all the way through to the likes of, uh, you know, of, of, of Terminator, Arnold Schwarzenegger in the in the uh, Terminator series movies, um, and uh, you know, more recently I mentioned uh, a couple of very interesting films around artificial intelligence that really make you think. Um, uh, specifically, the likes of, of of the Ava character from uh, Ex Machina uh, as being a really interesting one that that is capable of uh, of, of, of building rapport, building a connection. But also, you know, capable of, of of quite kind of devious behavior and, and looking for, you know, for ways around things as well. So really showing uh, human traits and and uh, and also a movie with Joaquin Phoenix um, called Her, um, where he effectively has um, a, a personal kind of you know chatbot phone uh, that follows his, his 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 day along. So really interesting to see you know takes on on where things will go. Um, so I think Jess, if you want, we can we can kick off the the poll. It looks very good, interesting so far. Close race between Star Wars and uh, Ava from Ex Machina. Not too much interest in the uh, T800 uh, Terminator.
Okay, so we're just going to uh, share the results now. So thanks to everyone for for your 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 opinions there. I think we 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 got a, a very high um, um, response rate there. I think we, we close to to eighty five percent when I last checked. Um, so interesting to see the um, the ones that popped up there. Um, obviously, the matrix is another one there that was that 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 was quite topical. But there seems to be uh, an interest in in those you know recent ones that I mentioned as well. Samantha from the the, the recent movie, her and and Ava. So you know, uh, artificial intelligence that can really connect with us on a more emotional level. Um, and, and then you have, you know, the likes of um, of Hal from Space Odyssey um, uh, and Star Wars, which are, you know, really early examples of, uh, you know, of, of AI and, uh, and robots in, in movies. Okay. So yeah, 102 votes, that's, that's excellent. Um, Okay, so uh, we're going to talk now about how that you would test a chatbot and what to look out for when you're checking if the chatbot you're working with is uh, is good, is advanced, is, you know, is an advanced application of, of natural language processing. Um, so there's certain areas where, where chatbots struggle with, um, but the, the, the first one, current events, uh, is, is interesting because I suppose as people, we want to be able to uh, converse and understand and discuss current events. I think particularly the, the situation that, that we're going through now with the current pandemic. Uh, these are things that are very topical with us uh, and very important. And um, you know, oftentimes when we're engaging with somebody um, in customer service, just there's a little bit more involved from a user perspective. We're not just looking for a for a task uh, to be completed. We're looking for that interaction, that social contact contact as well. Um, so an understanding of current events from a chatbot can be can be very powerful, and um, particularly things like what's happening in in, in the current scenario, um, and also areas um, you know around uh, you, know, you know politics, uh, anything topical like that, the weather as well. Uh, so these are questions that you would typically ask um, uh, in a normal conversation with a person. Uh, on the phone, if you're if you're talking to them about, uh, you know, your 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 account with them, for example. Um, so another way is to, to to test is to engage in small talk. Um, so uh, engage in small talk, uh, really just uh, you know shooting the breeze, uh, asking the the chatbot how it's how it's doing, has it had it has it had a busy day, um, you know, has it talked to anyone interesting today? All these type of questions. Uh, you can test a, a chatbot with, uh, and also it's nice to see uh, a, a chatbot that comes back with responses and, and questions to you as well. Um, so it's, it's it's both ways. A chatbot, a good chatbot, can come back and can kind of respond and, and engage with you as well. Um, another test that I that I like to try when I'm uh, you know when I'm experimenting with a new chatbot is is you know ask it a question, um, uh, then continue the conversation. Uh, and then come back uh, and uh, and say, you know, what was that question that I asked you? What was that first question that I asked you? I can't remember. Um, and to see if the chatbot can go back a couple of minutes. Um, it's equivalent to uh, as uh, as humans, we might be we might be discussing something with a friend on the phone, um, and something might happen in the background. Um, and we lose concentration for a minute, and we have to you know to say, what was that that you said there a minute ago? I didn't quite catch that. Um, so this is, is is something that you can you can you can test a chatbot with. Uh, the ability to handle complexity. This is obviously uh, you know a very significant area uh, that that causes uh, issues um, for chatbots in terms of you know how can they understand something that is very very complex and uh, not just a simple question like you know um, you know I'd like to uh, book uh, you know book a restaurant or I'd like to um, you know, to carry out a particular task, you know, book something into my calendar, for example, ask it something quite complicated that requires uh, a little bit of analysis that might require a bit of research. 
Um, uh, and this is something that, that, that as a way that we can, we can test uh, chatbots. And then in terms of empathy, um, uh, you know, really interesting one now, um, and we touched on it there a few minutes ago, uh, the ability of uh, a chatbot uh, to understand emotions and to, you know, to understand a little bit more uh, that, that's going on than just the, the you know, the, the task that a person is asking for. How are they going about asking the chatbot about that task? Is there any underlying emotions expressed? Uh, and this is where small talk can, can, can play a huge role. Small talk allows uh, us to, uh, you know, to, to, to connect. It also allows us to listen as well. If, if, if a chatbot, for example, is able to start off a conversation and ask a person how it is doing, you know, the, it might be able to understand that that person's had a particularly difficult day and, you know, sensitivity may need to be a little bit higher. Uh, it also may understand that person's having a really good day and, you know, to, they need to kind of feed on that enthusiasm and, and good vibe to kind of keep the conversation flowing in a natural manner. So these are things that really, that really um, make a difference in chatbots and, and you, can, you can play around with, with chatbots and, and test them accordingly. So moving on to chatbot that I mentioned earlier on, so this is the, the winner of the, the, the Loebner Prize for, um, for artificial intelligence. Um, uh, uh, or a controversial enough award uh, as it is Anyway, but I just found, found this one quite interesting one to, to kind of look at um, and, and play around with. And I can share a, a link as to how you can get on uh, and, and access uh, Mitsuko yourselves uh, for a conversation. So um, this is, um, is one that I, I've taken a couple of, uh, of screenshots of, of sort of tests that I kind of performed. Um, and I can show you just a couple of quick dialogues before we move into our, uh, our, our, our final demo. So this is just an example uh, of, of me engaging with small talk. Um, you know, just asking simple, simple questions. Um, you know, what is this chatbot doing? Um, it responds by saying it's chatting to a lot of people on the web, you know, so again, interesting uh, kind of, you know, responses that you can start off and, and, and you, can, you, you can, you know, engage and, and discuss accordingly. Um, in this case, you can see a little bit of personality coming out. So I'm, I'm telling the chatbot that I'm that I'm giving a talk on chatbots uh, for the Data Science Festival. Um, it doesn't appear too interested in, in, in what I'm doing. Um, uh, and then a kind of a, a, a sort of a cheeky response at the end. This is very generous of you just to kind of show a little bit of a uh, bit of personality there as well. Uh, not just purely task driven uh, chatbot. Uh, another uh, screenshot just to show uh, the, the question test. Um, so I'm just asking the chatbot, uh, you know, are they, are they having a nice day? How are they getting on? Um, uh, where are, are, are they from? Those type of things. Uh, and then coming back and asking, you know, what was that first question that I, uh, uh, that, that I asked? Uh, and the response is that I introduced myself um, by, by, by telling my name, which I actually, which I actually didn't. I used the chatbot's name. So very difficult one for chatbots to do. Um, uh, and this is where you, you can separate the advanced ones. Okay, so emotional awareness, which is, uh, which is, the, the, which is the, the advancements that are happening in, in chatbots now. Um, you know, expressing an emotion uh, to a robot or to uh, to a chatbot, seeing how it responds. Um, so, for example, this is uh, this is me uh, talking um, in the early early hours, working on this presentation. So I'm saying I had a long day. It was you know a long day of you know work and preparing for presentation. This is how I, how, how I feel right now. Um, you know, me asking the chatbot, you know, can you can you cheer me up? Can you can you lighten the mood mood a little bit? And then the chatbot responds with. Uh, with it, with with a joke, um, not the funniest joke I've ever heard, but but nonetheless, you know, ability to kind of to be aware of the situation and, and to look to, to engage in a little bit of a little bit of banter. Okay, so as part of this, we we built a chatbot, um, which is very interesting, uh, interesting interesting approach, and, and you know, strong sort of learning uh, on our part. 
Um, but this involved um, not using uh, you know, a, a chatbot platform that are, you know, so many of them out there, not using a pre-built platform where uh, this does it for you. So this was involved building a rule-based uh, algorithm. Um, uh, we used OrShiny for this um, and uh, a basic enough application of, of a chatbot, like some of the earlier ones um, that came out. Uh, to, to be able to handle conversation was what we wanted to achieve um, or to be able to process a request. So that's the two uh, kind of goals of, of this chatbot. And we, uh, we used Wikipedia integration as well, just to build um, uh, some knowledge uh, of, our, of our chosen topic. So, so I'll introduce you to our uh, COVID-19 experimental chatbot. And what this does is it provides you with the latest news and information uh, about vaccine development. Uh, and again, we've used Wikipedia web scraping to get a, an update there uh, as to what's happening uh, in real time. It also uh, connects to data from uh, the John Hopkins Resource Center, um, and that's through, through GitHub, and that allows us to, to plot real time graphs. And we've also built in uh, an awareness of, of common symptoms of COVID-19, um, just to give a little bit more uh, details. If, if somebody is, for example, um, looking to, you know, to understand how, how they are themselves and, and if they're displaying any symptoms, this is something that could be done to automate that instead of, you know, for example, a doctor or any of the medical professions who, who obviously we all know have been, have, have been so busy and, and under pressure um, over the last number of months. So I am going to stop sharing for a moment and just bear with me while I launch our chatbot. Seems to be working, which is good. And now I will share my screen. So I think it should appear um, our COVID-19 experimental chatbot. Um, so on the left, you'll see a, a welcome message, um, which just says, hello, I'm your COVID-19 chatbot. I will help you get the latest news and information and uh, keep you informed. So let's start. So. I'm just going to start an initial greeting to say hello. So our chatbot has responded back saying, uh, hey there. I'm just going to ask the chatbot how it's doing, just in the context of, you know, obviously a lot of people could be using something like this, and, and these chatbots can be engaged in a number of conversations. So ask the chatbot how is it doing in these, these challenging times, and Chatbot is doing well, it's keeping uh, the distance from other chatbots. So we're just building up a little bit of, of, of what I mentioned there, that just that little bit of personality, that little bit of, of humor to try and you kind of diffuse uh, what, what could be a, a very serious subject and to try and engage um, the, the user in, in conversation. And we can do uh, a, a number of, of, of things. If I can ask about symptoms, for example, what, what are symptoms? So I've asked what are symptoms of COVID and the bot has come back with uh, quite a detailed uh, response to that question. So we've, we've got a few light uh, conversation uh, starters uh, and then there, there, there's, there's, there's quite a lot of detail here coming uh, in, a, in a long response here.
and I just thank you there. So that's a um, the, the the chatbot then gets caught a little bit. So we 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 programmed kind of a limited number of scenarios here, but something that we'd you know we would love to kind of work on a, a little bit more and and you know build more features in there. But just a quite kind of an example of how you would use a chatbot to kind of integrate with uh, the likes of Wikipedia and and use programming tools that I'm sure many of you are are, are familiar with, the likes of Bohr and Python. And um, so I think what we will do now, so that's the the uh, the full extent of, of, of my presentation now. So I am going to stop sharing my screen and ask David to help me out with some, some questions that we've, we've got from our, our engaged audience. Perfect. I am back. It is an engaged audience, man. We've got loads of questions, which is good right. to see. Um, I think it was also the, the most well-responded poll we've ever Ever ran, ever, you know, 85% of people responded. So uh, there you go. I was just a little bit disappointed not to see Crichton from, from Red Dwarf, but he, he didn't <laughs> movies, did he? But uh, yeah, he, he'd be my favourite, I think. It so. could have been a very long list, David, I think. Yeah, there was one or two ones that I just good knowledge, Good, good yeah. knowledge of AI movie characters. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Mate, as I say, we've, we've got 20 questions or something like that. Great, so, great, um, great. Fire, fire through them. Uh, do the best to get through everything, guys. But we will obviously keep an, a little look on time as well. So um, I'll jump straight in. The, the first question uh, is from uh, Alexei Simonov. Um, he's asking in the work that you've been doing there at the Bank of Ireland, if you've come across uh, good open source tools uh, that help you build a reasonable chatbot. Yeah, I, I think, you know, um, yeah, thanks for the question, Alexi. I think that, uh, you know, there is, you know, a huge amount of resources out there. I think for, for those of us who are, who are coding in, in the likes of OR and Python, um, and, uh, you know, there's, there's, a, there's a lot that you can do there. There's some really good um, um, blogs and, and things like that. But, but yeah, we, we, we used uh, we use OR Shiny, which is, which is open source as well. And it was just a great opportunity for us to kind of build, uh, build something and play around with it and, and understand how it learns. Uh, albeit a quite a rudimentary chatbot that we built, um, but it, but really a lot of learnings from that. So I think uh, I think there is plenty of of, of, of good stuff out there. And then you can go on a little bit to those those platforms uh, that that have to build chats. I think you know Microsoft is probably one of the, the lead leaders in that area. Okay, thank you. Um, next down, uh, we have a question from Eric uh, Atwell. Um, he was talking specifically about the uh, Bank of Ireland um, and, and I guess use cases uh, yeah. with, with uh, chatbots uh, and I guess in financial services in general, what, what, what are the opportunities there? Absolutely, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So this is an area that we're kind of looking at ourselves at the moment. Um, I think like a lot, of, a lot of financial institutions are looking to kind of bring this in. You know, we've seen some, some of the larger institutions in, in in the UK and the US kind of really use this. Um, one of the ones I looked at was the MasterCard uh, chatbot called Kai, and, and just looking at ways that 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 uh, uh, you know chatbots can kind of work in in, in our sector, like um, uh, banking, financial services, um, you know, to carry out uh, uh, simple tasks like you know, moving money from account to another, uh, checking interest rates, and, and things like that, and and offering enhanced services. So it's very much an area that that. That's uh, hotly discussed in 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 our world, um, and you know we're we're looking at a number of use cases that we could we, that we could pr progress ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, one one that uh, came to mind was in the area of, of kind of um, foreign exchange and some of the platforms there. So there's just there's, there's there's no shortage of opportunities, but we're we're probably looking at at kind of implementing something that's that's robust. And I think you know that with all of the security concerns uh, and trust issues. It, you know, we're probably a little bit um, slower to market on that basis. Yeah, makes sense. Makes sense. Uh, that that actually kind of leads us on to the next question there from uh, Natalia. Um, as al algorithms, uh, including AI, are evolving, mm -hmm. uh, do you feel that there should be more emphasis placed on the ethical aspect of coding, uh, some sort of basic standards, good governance, etc.? Uh, so, I guess the ethics side comes in more and more. So, what's your view yeah. there? Uh, great question, Natalia. Yeah, and uh, you know, even outside of chatbots, there's been so much um, um, events and conferences that I've been to that have that have touched in this area. So I'm by by no means uh, an expert on it, but I think uh, I think a really good point. Yeah, I think um, was it the Microsoft uh, chatbot 
pay, I think around 2016, that got in a bit of hot water around uh, tweets and things like that. And, you know, there's, there's so much sensitivity around us because the more powerful we make these chatbots, the more technology that underpins them, uh, you know, the more likely they are going to uh, struggle with things that, that humans struggle as well um, and get things wrong and, you know, the sensitivity of comments and, and things like that. So I think, you know, a, ro a robust framework for that is, is something that I think would, would certainly help and um, possibly because of the advancement in technology over the last decade or so, uh, the, the regulation may be, be, be following a little bit behind that. Um, but yeah, I, I would see that as being a, an important area going forward. Um, it, it's, I think it certainly is moving so, so crazy fast, but it, it equally highlighted at the beginning there where you were talking about some of the early work and, you know, it's actually been 50 years or more, you know, people mm -hmm. have been looking at these problems and it just seems to have happened in the last couple of years, but you know, there is that long lead time as well. Um, the next question caught my eye actually, uh, Moen Mohammed, um, in your opinion, how far away from, how far away are we from a bot to handle mental health sufficiently? Uh, or do you think we're already at that stage? Yeah, good question, Mo. And yeah, um, I, I think we actually, technology-wise, we are already at that stage. Yeah, where um, you know, uh, as humans, we all often talk about, you know, are we good listeners? Are we active listeners? Um, whereas I think if we if we look at certain tasks that uh, chatbots and artificial intelligence can handle, this is probably one of those that it's actually well suited to. Its agenda really can be. It has no agenda. It can be an agenda that is to listen and to understand and to provide guidance and maybe not to be too kind of um, opinionated about things. You know, oftentimes, you know, um, you, people would have an issue that they would want to just discuss and, 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 and open and get it out. Uh, and probably if you're talking about the likes of Siri and Alexa who've gone beyond into the voice area, it might be a little bit more suited, suited to that. Uh, to engage and connect, but I think if um, uh, from for mental health and well-being, I think you know if you're having a, an inter interaction with a chatbot that has um, a, a video on you, for example, um, that can detect you know facial expressions and things like that, and it can become more powerful. So so you know as humans, we we, we use words to communicate and to talk, and, and those words are 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 are, are important. Um, but with things like tone and body language, uh, are so much you know, so much outweigh the, the words we use. Um, you know, so if, 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 if chatbots can get that extra layer, um, it would need more trust from people to, to interact with them, but I think they would be more powerful if they were given more access as well. Fantastic. I must admit, that's not a use case that had crossed my mind, but there, there's so many out there actually, and that, mm. that's uh, definitely going to be beneficial, I think. So, um, next question down is, uh, is from Nora. Um, do you think it can be dangerous for a chatbot like Mitsuka uh, Ava from Ex Machina to be marketed, designed as a human. Yeah, uh, yeah, I think Ava, I think is very dangerous anyway. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. However, you use it in marketing or whatever, I would say. So yes, but but yeah, I think um, that's you know that's that's an obvious area of concern, isn't it? That um, you know we're 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 arming uh, these chatbots and AI with a huge amount of data. Um, the more data we give it, from the more people. The, the better it becomes, the more more accurate it becomes, the more helpful it becomes, but the more powerful it becomes as well to influence people and to adjust things. Um, so I think, yeah, I think that's, you know, the better chatbots become, the more prominent that issue is going to be. Yeah. I think as well, it's um, different generations uh, just get used to this stuff. My, my little niece is four today and she's used to just talking to Alexa, you know, so yeah. uh, you get a bit older like me. It's, uh, it's more of a change, isn't it? That's so. a great point. Yeah, that's a great point because if we're, you know, we're growing up with kind of, you know, digital devices and things like that, a second nature to us. Mm -hmm. We will, you know, that, that generation that are, that are coming up when they get to their teens, they will have uh, much more of a trust uh, than we will. Um, especially since the technology will increase. So, you know, th th you could be, you know, four or five years old walking around in your house uh, as a kid talking to Alexa, uh, you know, and asking Alexa to open a door for you or turn off a light or something like that. And you know, it's a quite powerful to grow up with that as a kid. Um, you know, that connection that we would have to that technology would be a lot stronger. Yeah. Well, they're saying that I feel like I'd have missed out if I hadn't had Tetris when I was a kid. So. <laughs> there you go. Um, <laughs> 
Next question. I'm going to pick, it's actually a third one down now. I think there's been a few upvotes and stuff, but it's from Preston. Um, why did you decide uh, to build the chatbot from scratch uh, rather than using the existing platform or framework? Yeah, good question. Good question. Um, I, I guess we wanted to build a basic one um, just to see how it worked. You know, um, I suppose like a lot of people in, in, in data science and, and you know, they, working with data, there's, a, there's an innate curiosity there. Um, so if, you know, for example, uh, we find out that we can do something like this ourselves, um, not easy to find out because, you know, when you're, when you're doing research in this area, particularly online, uh, you just come across waves upon waves of platforms that will do it for you. Um, but, uh, but in some other projects that we've worked on um, in the bank as well, we found that, you know, if there's a bit of innovation and a bit of creativity and a bit of desire there, you know, you can actually go out and you can, you can learn quite a lot about these these you know custom built solutions, and oftentimes you can tailor them a little bit more as well if you take the learnings uh, from what uh, you know those platforms have done. But, but yeah, we just we were curious. We just wanted to play around with it. You know, I suppose that kind of that nerd element kind of came in. You know, just being a geek, I like it. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Like the movie list was the same. You know, um, I'm a bit conscious of time. Uh, we're going to try and keep these lunch and learns to that sort of one hour uh, window. Uh, maybe we'll go for one, maybe two more, and then we'll wrap stuff up. Yeah. There is still stacks of questions. So uh, I might right. follow up with you offline, uh, Jamie. Yeah, absolutely. We can do that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Happy to. Maybe yeah, yeah. It's, it's, or something and, and get it's it out great there. to get questions. It really is. I, I really, you know, a lot of people would talk to me about presentations and, and dread that moment at the end where you're, you're finished. Keep on coming, eh? Keep on coming. Running 20 points. So yeah, that um, I enjoyed them now. So. In terms of that chatbot that you built there, uh, this question from Dragos, um, is your uh, chatbot processing and simplifying the content in which it is built? Uh, E.g., do you bias it in any way towards plain language as opposed to scientific speak? Yeah, I, I think that's a good question. I think we probably haven't gone down to that that, that level of, 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 of technical, um, you know, uh, capability. Um, ours is very rudimentary, kind of rule based. It can it can respond to a number of things. Even at the end, the, the thank you, or you know, we've built a, a number of basic. But but what we've done, what we use actually quite a lot is, is we use string matching, and um, for a number of, of really interesting things. I mean, it, it's it, it's so useful. It, it's kind of a an underrated area of, of, of kind of you know of algorithms in, in machine learning context and um, so we, we we use that to kind of match things so i think those the early chatbots they just if they see something coming from from the context they pick out a few keywords and they latch onto that and that determines their response so it's it's quite basic but i think yeah we probably haven't got to the level where we would be able to you know get into that uh, that topic there with the bias and things yeah, I think in 40 minutes of content, uh, you, you could probably do uh, one of these every week and, and just keep mm -hmm. going, couldn't you? So yeah. um, we'll take one more question. This is from Claire. Uh, as I say to everyone out that, whose question we haven't got to, we will follow up. Uh, we'll put it in a blog post and, and do our best to get all those answered. Uh, mm -hmm. Final question then uh, from Claire. Um, how much uh, of chatbots rely on existing NLP libraries? Uh, i.e. how easy is it to create a chatbot in a in a rare language and i did see one other question further down talking about african languages and stuff like that have, mm -hmm. have you come across that yeah I, I haven't really i mean the the in terms of chatbots um the good ones can understand if people change languages so if you if you start speaking in english and then start speaking in spanish it can understand that oh here's you know spanish uh you know we'll respond in in spanish um, uh, and even it might be a, a quippier response as well. I don't know if you speak two languages or something like that. So I think, um, yeah, I haven't really come across that. Um, but uh, but yeah, rare languages. I mean, it, you know, it would be interesting. I, I you know grew, grew up and went to an old Irish school. It would be interesting to you know to have a chatbot that I could converse with with an Irish. And I know uh, Geolingo have um, a really interesting application of, of AI and, and NLP in, in there. Mm -hmm. um in, in their tool you can actually speak now with geolingo and it'll speak back to you you can actually practice rather than just typing things out it'll speak to you and have wow. conversation fantastic fantastic uh, in terms of that one actually we, we it ties me in towards some of my end stuff as well with a little plug of our youtube channel uh, we have got some other content on, on the youtube channel and uh, actually a guy from uh, a company called we farm 
uh, actually gave a lightning talk for us talking specifically about NLP with with African right. languages so uh, mm -hmm. ch check that one out if that's if yeah. that's for you uh, but as I say uh, conscious of time so to join it to a close uh, Jamie uh, thank you very much for for giving up your time to to share with the community uh, I ho hope you've enjoyed it um, hopefully when back to normal we'll have to uh, crack a beer and uh, do norm some of the no normal post event stuff uh, yep. but now th thank you very much uh, I'd also like to say just a very brief thank you, uh, as you mentioned at the start, Jess and Amy uh, work really, really hard to make all this sort of stuff happen. Um, and yeah, they've, they've put together a really good schedule of webinars over the coming weeks. So uh, massive thanks to the team at the Data Science Festival. Uh, and yeah, going to draw it to a close now, but thanks again once more, Jamie. And uh, yeah, th thanks for your time. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.